So what do we do today, Lisa? Well, we're here at Gettysburg National, National Military, Military park, Battlefield. Battlefield or park or something like that. <laughs> and uh, so we uh, decided to come out of quarantine for a day, for a day and uh, came down here, felt that we could socially distance and still do something. Mostly drove around the 24, 24 mile um, auto tour and uh, we got out and looked at all the monuments and stuff. And uh, so Learned some history. Learned some history. So this talks about all the monuments and markers here at the Gettysburg and said that uh, there are more than 1,300 monuments, memorials and markers on the battlefield. And uh, most of them were erected, as I said, in the 1880s, especially among the Union veterans. Every Union regiment here has at least one monument. Um, and uh, so we've got headquarters markers. Some of these are put out by the, uh, the War Department, the United States War Department, uh, including headquarters markers, some battery tablets, uh, Confederate and Union Brigade markers. It's also state memorials and uh, all the soldiers in particular state. Some of those like, uh, there's also bronze statues of generals and other notable persons who were at the battlefield. And then there are regimental monuments that were put up by the individual res regiments, uh, mostly by uh, on the Union side. Um, Confederates uh, did not put up many, uh, many regimental markers here. Reynolds Woods and the, the battle began here about the 8 a.m. to the west of uh, McPherson Barn. Union cavalry confronted the Confederate infantry advancing east along Chambersburg Pike. Heavy fighting spread north and south along the ridge as additional forces arrived. But these are all, this is the, the Union lines here holding, holding the cemetery ridge. Hey, there's the truck. Sort of a little high ground here which uh, Union held for a while. Over here is uh, McPherson Farm. That's uh, where the Confederates uh, were marching here and engaged uh, with Reynolds. And, uh, this memorial over here, Reynolds, is actually the location that he was killed on the first day of the battle, which was the, actually the bloody, actually the bloodiest day of the uh, of the battle. Um, people like to think of Pickett's Charge as the bloodiest day, but the, the, the bloodiest day is actually the first day. So we're on uh, Cemetery Ridge. This is the the. These markers mark the Union positions on the first day of uh, the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863. There's a uh, statue of Abner Doubleday, Major General, commanded the First Corps Army of the uh, First Corps Army of the Potomac at Gettysburg. It doesn't say on the statue here, but I, th but I think he's the uh, the father of baseball. Actually, the uh, Name of the baseball stadium at West Point's the Double Day Field, named after him. It was erected in uh, 1886, which seems to be uh, pretty much when most of these uh, the monuments around here on the battlefield were, were erected in the uh, 1880s. We had uh, this is the Eternal Light Peace Memorial. At 1 p.m., Major General Robert Rhodes, Confederates attacked from this hill, threatening Union forces on McPherson and over ridges. 75 years later, over 1,800 Civil War veterans helped dedicate this memorial to the Peace Eternal and a nation united. There you go. Unmask a bubble family there. I'm looking out over Cemetery and McPherson Ridge here. Down over the high ground. This thing was uh, dedicated in uh, 1938, the 75th anniversary of the war, um, and all Civil War veterans were uh, invited to come here, expenses paid by the government, and about uh, 2,000 uh, showed up for the, that dedication. Um, majority of them obviously were in their 90s or their hundreds, uh, or over 100. And uh, it's a crowd there's of 200,000 people who came for that dedication you know, that day, and the monument was uh, was built of Alabama limestone and main granite, and uh, supposed to be lit eternally. Oh, there it is. I see it lit up there now, and to symbolize the unity of the United States. Uh, Two hundred thousand people came here to dedicate this memorial. These uh, these round base bark markers were put here by the War Department, the United States War Department, formerly the Department of the Defense, and uh, now known as the Department of the Defense. And uh, the round-based ones are uh, Confederate brigades, and, and uh, square-based ones are Union brigades. But here on, uh, this is obviously a Confederate-held area. Elk Ridge, 
Union soldiers here held stubbornly against Rhodes' advance. By 3.30 p.m., the entire Union line from here to McPherson Ridge had begun to crumble, finally falling back to Cemetery. When the first day ended, the Confederates held the upper hand. Lee decided to continue the offensive, hitting his 70,000-man army against Meade's Union army of 93,000. And that ends July 1, 1863. With uh, nearly uh, 16,000 soldiers on both sides, either killed, wounded, missing in action, or captured. A lot more of them Union soldiers leading the South to think that they had an advantage. Yeah, well, the, uh, the, the South did win the, uh, win the first day. Yeah. But the, uh, the, the North actually uh, retreated into better defensive positions for days two and three. And we can see some of those higher higher uh, mountaintops over here. There's probably a big round top and a little round top, which uh, anchored in the North in days on the second and third. This is the uh, North, Car North Carolina Memorial. And uh, this is on the uh, July 2nd. Early in the day, the Confederate Army positioned itself on the high ground along Seminary Ridge, which is this ridge we're on right here. And north of the cemetery and Culp's Hills, Union forces occupied Culp's and Cemetery Hills and along the Cemetery Ridge south to the Round Tops. Okay, and we see the Round Tops over here. The lines of both armies form two parallel fissures. Over here, we've got the Tennessee Memorial. And I just read a sign back here, it said uh, one in four Confederate soldiers who fell at, who, uh, who fell at uh, Gettysburg were from North Carolina. It's a, a statue to the 11th Mississippi Infantry Regiment. And uh, interestingly here, 393 combatants, and at the end of the three days, only 53 of them were not, uh, not non-casualty. So this is a little round top and uh, defense of the Union right flank on the second day. And it almost, uh, almost crumbled here. <laughs> and this is a little round top here, obviously a very high position overlooking a lot of the, uh, the Gettysburg area. And uh, a lot of action took place on the second day here. Um, this is this is a, a New York uh, Infantry Regiment memorial, pretty elaborate little thing, and uh, you know it was, uh, was held the right flank of of the Union Army, and uh, the Confederates almost uh, breached it, but were repulsed, uh, eventually repulsed. You can see what, com what type of commanding ground it has here over over this area. This is the view across to Little Round Top, and again, you can see how much of a commanding uh, view that had here. Not exactly sure when and where all of these uh, Union forces that are that have the monuments here were, but uh, obviously there is quite bit of Union strength in this area. This George Green, he was the oldest Union general here at Gettysburg. Here we are on Culp's Hill. Can't get up the tower. Yeah, he was 62 years old. He Six. had them build, uh, what, what do you call this fortification? Yeah, he called Five them. feet tall wooden yeah. uh, called ramparts them. to called them. repel the Confederates who were trying to get up the hill. Yeah, called them breastworks. He had taught engineering. This is uh, William Wells. He was a major here at Gettysburg. Uh, he's from uh, Vermont, and he was awarded a Medal of Honor for gallantry here at uh, Gettysburg. The flags flutter and snap. The sunlight flashes from the officers' swords. Low words of command are heard. And thus, in perfect order, this gallant array of gallant men marches straight down into the valley of death. So about three o'clock, following a furious two-hour cannonade, Confederate infantry launched a massive frontal assault from this ridge against the center of the Union line on Cemetery Ridge ahead. 
the Confederates were comprised this section of the line. The Confederates who comprised this section of the line were Virginians, commanded by Major General George E. Pickett. The Southern attackers, 12,000 strong, surged forward in a line of battle a mile long. As they marched across the Emmitsburg Road and approached the enemy line, the Federals raked them with deadly canister and musket fire. <coughs> Nevertheless, with unsurpassed courage, the Southerners pressed on. Pickett's men gained a small lodgment in the Union line at the angle, but could not hold it. Casualties mounted and the attack lost momentum. By 4 p.m., Confederate survivors came streaming back to the shelter of this ridge. The Confederate tide had reached its high watermark. So essentially, Pickett's charge lasted one hour. Yep. The, uh, the most famous battle in the Civil War lasted a total of, well, one hour plus the two hour of, uh, of cannonade. That is really, really uh, interesting. General Robert E. Lee, the commander of the Army of Northern Virginia, accepted responsibility for the failure of Pickett's charge. This has been my fault, he told Pickett. I thought my men were invincible. Straight ahead, here's where uh, you know, Pike Pickett's charge was uh, was started back all along, along this ridge, is, uh, is where the charge on July 3rd started from. You can see sort of the, now, the, the open field and across over here to Cemetery Ridge um, where the, uh, the Confederates were, were trying to uh, reach the Union lines. This is the Virginia Memorial. The large open field to the east is where the last Confederate assault, known as Pickett's Charge, occurred on July 3rd. That's quite the uh, state memorial here. And it's pretty, pretty large. Okay. So this memorial has uh, Robert E. Lee mounted on his horse traveler and uh, the people at the base of it. They represent various types who left their civil occupations to join the Confederate Army. So from the left, it's a professional man, a mechanic, an artist, a boy, a businessman, a farmer, and a youth. This was erected by Congress to the Army of the Potomac. They were pretty close here, very close actually, to uh, the high water mark of the Confederacy. You know, looking out over here, it's a field that uh, Pickett's charge. So a very interesting thing on this, this battlefield is that they came back and they marked all of the unit's boundaries. So we see the, uh, the one on the left with the uh, with the R, and that make, means it was the uh, the right hand side of the 19th Maine Infantry, on July 3rd. And over here, this is marked left, which was the uh, 20, 20th uh, Massachusetts Infantry. And uh, these are just scattered all over this all over this battlefield, marking exactly where these units were, and, uh, and during the battle. Uh, this is uh, this is very interesting. Here's big rock here from the 20, 20th Massachusetts Infantry. Just, what can you say about it? It's like, just a piece of granite from Rhode Island. I don't even know if it's, no, if it's granite. It's from the Granite Country, uh, Granite Company in Rhode Island. But what is that rock? Looks like just sedimentary rock. <laughs> Maybe pulled from the ocean or something. 7th Michigan Infantry. You can see these all up and down. This line here. It's all hat this all it's from the uh, third of July. This is uh, George Meade standing here on his uh, horse overlooking Pickett's charge area. Initially when I came here this morning, I saw this guy in his little cherry picker. And uh, I didn't know who's who this was. I was a little concerned that they were going to uh, cancel out this monument here. But, uh, nope, not cancel them out. Actually, he's doing a little maintenance on it. Cleaning them up, been here all day. Cleaning them up and uh, repainting place that need to be repainted. So, glad to see that. Actually, uh, saw an announcement from Gettysburg National Park. They said that uh, they were not going to tear down anything here. 
So I think that's a good thing. It's more about history here than about racism. And here it is, the Copes of Trees. This is um, the high water mark of the Confederacy. This is, is uh, as far as Pickett's Charge got on July 3rd. South Carolina Monument. Driving by. It's the Arkansas Memorial. This is the Alabama Memorial. Yeah, this is the, uh, the Pennsylvania Monument here at, uh, at Gettysburg. And uh, this thing is massive. And uh, that's what they say. It's the biggest one here at, uh, on the battlefield. It says uh, Union Artillery held the line here on Cemetery Ridge late in the day. That was on what? July 3rd? July 3rd. Um, as Meade, General Meade, called for infantry from Culp's Hill and other areas to strengthen and hold the position in the center of the Union. I think this is Culp's Hill over here. But uh, this thing is pretty darn big. Wow. It was huge from the round top and it's yeah. huger here. They say this thing has a pretty good observation of almost all of, all of the three days battlegrounds here. You know, they list uh, everyone who uh, was in these infantry regiments and fought here from Pennsylvania. There's some here that are very interesting that uh, people have been removed. So that guy's been removed. And there's uh, some other that have been removed somewhere. But uh, yeah, this guy here's been removed. So that's interesting. This looks like the uh, Ohio Monument. So this is a uh, state of Vermont's monument. Big uh, tall one here. Pretty close to the Pennsylvania Monument. And this is the New York Monument. Memorial, although this is not where Lincoln gave the address. Now this monument, which is the first grand monument that was erected here in the uh, Gettysburg area, um, is uh, very close to the site of where Lincoln gave the uh, Gettysburg address. sort of in the midst of the cemetery here. What do you think? It's just really fascinating, especially after singing Hamilton recently and thinking more about battle strategy. You can learn so much here. It's, it, I found it really fascinating, really interesting. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was super fascinating. Uh, I, I grew up here about uh, 30 miles away it took us like 45 minutes to, to drive down here today and I've been here to the battlefield multiple times and you always hear about you always hear about Pickett's Charge and uh, you know big round top and little round top and uh, you know Devil's Den and all this stuff and but, the high water mark and the high the high water exactly and uh, you know, I think today was the first time that I really sort of understood you know from a from a geographic perspective how, how the battle played out and uh, you know, I, I, that, that, was, that was really interesting for me. The other interesting thing here is just so many monuments. And I talked about that, you know, I talked about that, like 1,300 monuments here. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's just, just, just fascinating. I mean, you, can only, you can only take in so many. I don't think we even took in 100. No, and, and actually one of the really interesting things to me about these monuments is that some of them are in people's front yards. And that the people who live in Gettysburg are actually living in... A historical museum, an outdoor history museum that's alive and breathing, and there's all kinds of evidence of it in people's yards, yeah. in their fields. Yeah, there's there's markers all over the place, all over the place. Yeah. So it was a it was a super super nice day. I mean, we were, we were lucky that uh, didn't, we, the sun wasn't coming beating down on us. Mm -hmm. You know, it was nice and cloudy. Little, you know, could be 80 degrees or so, but uh, it was it was good. Mm -hmm. So, so. so come visit Gettysburg. Come visit Gettysburg, absolutely. You don't even have to get out of your car if you don't want. <laughs> you can socially distance here. All right. 
Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Adiós.